Hey, my name is Paris, Pastor Paris Hibbler, and I'm the pastor of the Crossover Center here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're so excited for you guys to join us tonight. Um, man, God has really been dealing with me lately in regards to the necessity and the need for prayer. So what I want to do tonight is I want to um, really challenge you tonight to go before the Lord in prayer, to go before the Lord in prayer. We're going to open God's word tonight. We're going to go through a few scriptures, and then we're just going to dissect the word of God tonight in regards to the necessity of prayer. If you're watching me right now, I want you to put it in the chat, prayer is a necessity. Prayer is a necessity. I believe that we have a responsibility to pray. I believe that God has anointed us for such a time as this to be people of prayer. I believe that we're in a very uh, different uh, season right now where God is really looking for who is going to go before the Lord for his people and for what he wants to do in this hour. So we're going to start in prayer tonight. Once again, I'd like to welcome everyone to our Wednesday night teaching. Well, let's go to the book of Acts. We're going to go to the book of Acts. And um, as I begin to go through the word of God in my study time, this really opens some doors for me. We're going to read Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through 7. And we're going to read in the Amplified Version. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through 7 in the Amplified Version. And I'm going to read this very quickly. It says, starting at verse 1, it says, Now about this time when the number of disciples was increasing, a complaint was made by the Hellenists, by the, uh, Hellenists or the Greek-speaking Jews against the native Hebrews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of food. How many know that when we go through life, as God begins to increase us, there's going to be uh, um, things that's going to happen. There's going to be complaints. There's going to be things that we're going to have to deal with as God begins to increase us. I don't know about you, but as God continued to increase my load, it seems like I have to deal with more trouble and more complaints and more issues and more problems as God began to increase me. The disciples, these men of God, the apostles begin to go and increase in the body of Christ. And all of a sudden there became a problem that needed to be solved. And the Bible says so. The 12 in verse 2. So the 12 called the disciples together and said, it is not appropriate for us to neglect teaching the word of God in order to serve tables and manage the distribution of food. The disciples had a clear understanding that though there was a problem that they could not negate away from what God told them to do. It was a necessity that they continue to do the ministry and do the work of God no matter what was happening. Is there anybody right now that says, God, I've got some issues and I've got some problems that's arising on the inside or in my family or in my marriage or in, in, my, in my career or my workplace? There's some things that have came up as God has begun to show me that he's with me. There's some things that have transpired that seem out of my control and I cannot afford not to continue in prayer and in the ministry of God. Many of us, we're struggling right now because our struggle is, is that we're trying to deal with one or two or three different things. And what's happening is, is God's time is being put on a back burner because we're too busy. God's time in prayer, God's time with fasting, God's time with reading, God's time with you crying out and laying before the Lord. We're, it's being neglected because we're doing the work that God told us to do, but we're not going back in to be renewed and be refreshed on a daily basis. I know I'm talking to somebody tonight. If you're watching me, just put in the chat, I need to be renewed. I need to be renewed. I need to be reflect, refreshed. I need to be able to go to where my source is. But if I'm too busy with problems and issues and I'm allowing those things to take me away from what God told me to do, it's going to be very difficult for me to be submissive to the voice and in the word of God. The disciples understood that there was a problem. 
They understood. So the twelve, the, 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 so the twelve called the disciples together and said, "It's not appropriate for us to neglect the teaching of the word of God to serve tables among and manage the distribution of food." We understand the widow's got to be taken care of, but 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 but, but we got to continue doing the work of God. And many think that sometimes that that the work of God is helping the widows, and which in all actuality it is. But I think that what we have to understand is, is that what is God asking from us at this moment? We understand that there are widows that need to be taken care of, that there's people that's homeless and there's people that need prayer and there's people that need Jesus. But we've got to focus on what God told us for right now, for this season in our lives. What is God saying to us? Sometimes we can be doing everything good, but not necessarily necessarily be doing things God's way I want you to put in the chat very quickly every good thing is not a God thing every good thing is not a God thing there are some times in our lives where the pressures and the problems of people will draw us away from what our true assignment is. There are some times where, where God will bless us and he will, he will let us know that we're blessed and we're highly favored and we're, and, we're, and we're all of these great things. But we'll get focused on what he told us to do years ago. And we forget about what God is saying right now. We forget about. What God is saying right now. So the disciples said this very clearly. They said, look, we got we to gotta, we gotta, we gotta fix this problem. And in verse 3 it says, therefore, brothers, choose from among you seven men with good reputations, men of good character, of godly character and moral integrity, full of the spirit of God and, and wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we will continue we will continue to devote ourselves steadfastly to prayer and to the ministry of the word. How many know that sometimes problems come to distract you to get out of your word or get out of your prayer time? I know the kids need to be fed. I know that the kids got homework. I know that your favorite TV show may be on. I know that things may be going on the, on the outside, but you cannot allow those things to reflect or to get you to the place where you are not in the face of God. The disciples, look, they had a problem, but they knew how to maneuver. They said, we're going to put these men of God in place because we cannot afford to move. I want you to put it in the chat very quickly. I can't afford to move. I can't afford to move. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what's your challenge right now. I don't know what you're dealing with on the inside. But I'm here to tell you tonight that you cannot afford to move. That whatever God called you to, whatever God had anointed you to do, I know it's a problem with society. I know it's a problem with your mother or your father. I know it's a problem, but if it's going to neglect your time with me, God said, put it away. If it's going to neglect your time with me, God said, put it away. If it's going to put you in a position where you're not going to pray as much as you should pray or you, you're not going to love as much as you should love and you're not going to be able to, to, to give and, and love the people of God the way you're supposed to, then God said, why are you spending your time in places that only help you? He spoke to them and he said something very clearly. He said, look, I got a responsibility right now and I cannot afford to leave. Those, though this is a problem, I can't afford to leave my post. Come on, if you're watching me, I want you to put it in the chat. Don't let your problems cause you to leave your post. Don't let your problems cause you to leave your post. There, there will be things that will happen. There's things that will transpire in your life as a believer. There's monkey wrenches that will be thrown in your schedules. And there's, there's career changes. There's life changes. There's things that will happen in your family with your children. But that cannot knock you off your post. These apostles said something very clearly. They said, but we will continue to devote ourselves in prayer. That's my highlight tonight. I believe that we got to move in prayer. Prayer is necessary. Prayer is not something that we can pick up whenever we get in trouble only. 
Prayer is not something that we just put on a Facebook status or we, we throw it on our Instagrams or our Twitters. It's not just words that we put out there. You know, when people get sick or when people have a death in the family, we, we comment, I'm praying, but are we really praying? Are, are the people of God really in his face? Are we really seeking God the way that we should be seeking him? Are we really in the depths of the heart of the God that we serve? Are we really praying, people of God? I may not get that many views or, or that many comments on this video because it challenges the, 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 the maturity of a believer. You know that when you're growing and you're maturing in God, it's when it don't take you that much to pray. When, it don't, when it's not a struggle to pray. You know that you're falling off when you have problems getting up and praying because prayerlessness is a sign of carnality. You know how carnal you are when you have not disciplined yourself to pray. You know that there's issues and problems that you have in your heart when you cannot humble yourself and pray. We talked about prayer or the lack of prayer or the absence of prayer is the presence of pride. The absence of prayer is the presence of pride. The lack of prayer will cause you to lose confidence in your calling. When you don't pray, you don't know what God is calling you to do. When you don't pray, you don't know what, you're, you're, not, you're not confident in your, 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 your prophetic uh, uh, calling. You're not confident in your apostleship. You're not confident as a pastor because you don't pray. When you don't pray, you lose confidence in your calling. When you don't pray, you don't have the confidence that you need. It's like, well, I know God told me to do this, but Lord, I'm afraid. That's because you don't pray. Because when you get in God, he'll bring you the confidence that you need. He'll give you the strength that you need. But if you don't pray, you lose confidence in your calling. We must understand that where there is no prayer, that there is no peace. We want our situations to change, but our situations will only change when we pray. These men of God was, was humble enough to understand that regardless of what, what was going on, to distract them, God said, I must stay in the place of prayer. I must be steadfast and consistent in what God told me to do. Don't let nothing snatch you out of your prayer closet. We became people that's easily distracted. We can't focus more than five minutes. We can't focus more than ten minutes and we blame it on our deficiencies. We blame it on things that we, that we hear our doctors and, our, and, our, and, our, and the people that we grew up with and we, we blame it on the things that we heard them say about us or, or we got ADD or we got ADHD. We got this and we got that. But when God brings a prayer into the life of a human being, he is now stable. And the things of God. Where there was no prayer, there was no foundation. This is the reason why the Bible says that men ought to always pray. Because men is the foundation of the family. We carry the load. We carry the bottom. We, we, we hardly ever get noticed. We hardly ever get recognized. But we are the reason why that the house is able to stand along with the strength and the power of God. But we are the foundation, so we have to make sure that we as men stay in prayer. A man that don't pray is a man that will hurt you. A man that will lie to you, a man that will cheat on you, a man that would do things spitefully against you. Maybe your problem in your relationship is that you are not praying for a man of prayer. Because prayer is the foundation of everything that is found to be true. Prayer is the foundation of everything that is found to be true. Where there's no prayer, there's no peace. When you don't pray, there's no passion. It's like, God, I know that you called me to do something, but, Lord, I've lost my passion for it. I, I, I used to love doing this. I used to love doing that. And God said, your passion is caught up in your prayer. You don't feel like doing what's right anymore because your passion for God has changed because you don't pray. 
Where have we came as a society where we're literally listening to the voices of people instead of hearing the voice of God? Prayer will keep your passions in check. Prayer will keep your ambitions pure. Some of us are am, uh, we're ambitious about things that are ungodly. Many of us are, we're, 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 we're such great entrepreneurs, we're such great uh, uh, thinkers, we're such great intelligent human beings, but, but our intelligence seems to override our spiritual or our godly morals. Prayer brings peace. If you ever need peace, prayer will bring peace. If you're watching me, put that in the chat. Prayer will bring peace. I want you to listen to this. Prayer holds a position within the human soul. Prayer holds a position within your soul. So when we lack prayer, other things take its place. Prayer holds a position in the human soul. And when we lack prayer, that position is now open for the enemy to come in. You know when your gates are open is when you stop praying. The minute you stop praying for your spouse is the minute you get ready for trouble. The minute you stop praying for your business, you stop praying for your children, you stop praying for your, for your family, that's when all hell begins to break loose. Maybe some things can be, can, 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 can be covered and things can be dealt with in, in, in a way that doesn't harm all of the time if we just humble ourselves and pray. He said, when we lack prayer, other things take its place. One of the key signs of the lack of prayer is depression, anxiety, fear, hopelessness, and a lack of passion. We don't have a passion for things that are right anymore. We're, we're struggling with the lack of prayer. I know this may be boring to you tonight, but I promise you everything that's good for you ain't necessarily always fun. It ain't necessarily always a hooping and hollering all of the time. Sometimes you got to be set down and taught on why you're dealing with what you're dealing with. Where there's, no, where there's no prayer, there's no passion. One of the things that I found out in my life is that the lack of prayer makes us hungry and thirsty for God. But the, but, but the enemy seeks to capitalize off our weakness in prayer. To make us hungry and thirsty for things that are impure. When we lack prayer, we, 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 there's something on the inside of the human being that wants a connection with God. That wants to get into his presence. That wants to bow down before him. But the enemy knows that that thirst and that hunger for the things of God can be manipulated if we don't pray. We see that with Jacob and Esau. Jacob found his brother at a place where he was hungry. And where he was hungry, he was at his weakest moment. And he got him to, to sell his birthright because of his weakness. I dare you to pray when you get weak. I dare you to pray when you don't have an understanding, when you don't know where your next dollar is coming from, when you don't know where your next meal is coming from. In your weakness, you got to pray. Many of us, we only pray when, 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 when we're on, when we on the high road. We only pray when everything is going right. But you got to pray in your weakness because the enemy will seek to capitalize off your thirst and your hunger. We understand that when our focus is on other people and our opinions is on what other people say about us, we've left the place of prayer. Sometimes we're focused on everything else other than what God called us to be. When you don't have the proper prayer life, there's a lack of focus. You're not focused on the things of God. You're not focused on the plans of God. You're not focused on what God wants to do in your life. 
You're focused on what everybody else think about you. You're focused on how everybody else view you and how everybody else feel like you should be doing this and you should be doing that. You don't have to tell me about what I should be doing if I'm in prayer because God will tell me. We're focused too many times on the opinions of people. We're focused too many times on the opinions of people. We allow people to dictate our lives with their words when we don't pray. You've got to understand that prayer will keep you focused. I want you to put that in the chat. Prayer is going to keep me focused. The lack of prayer is what separates you from holiness. When you don't pray, you become insensitive to sin and carnality. It don't mean nothing to go get drunk. It don't mean nothing to you to go get high. You would go do things that you know it's not good for your body and good for your spirit, and it means nothing to you. When you don't pray, you look for reasons to try to, 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 to say that what I'm doing is okay, that I can handle it. I can, I can handle it. You know the relationship on the job can go a different direction, but, but you in your pride says, I can handle it. I, I know how to be in a relationship, in a work relationship, and because you don't pray, you find yourself privy and innocent and open to the things of the world. When you don't pray, there's no sensitivity toward the things of God. You will cuss folks out and act like ain't nothing happened. No, no conviction. You will do people wrong. You will not pay, pay people their money back. You will not treat people right. You will gossip and talk about everybody. You'll be unforgiven. You'll be backbiting and feel like God is with you. I look on my page every single day and I scroll. And there are so many people that really think God is with them. And I look at the things that they say and the things that they do. And mind you, God is still with us no matter what's going on in our life because he's omnipresent. But I'm talking about that we're, there's people who really feel like that they're in right standing with God. In their sinful lives. Prayer will cause your eyes to be back focused on holiness. When you pray, you'll start saying, I shouldn't be doing this. And you'll stop doing it. When you pray, you'll, you'll get to notice like, oh, man, I haven't spent time with my wife. I haven't spent time with my husband. I haven't spent time with my children. Lord, when you pray, it's like, man, I haven't given all month. I've been, I've been asking God for an increase, and I ain't gave nobody nothing. When you pray, you keep your morals aligned with the word of God. When you pray, it allows you to be sensitive towards the things of God. People who, who don't pray, they are easily offended. Whatever you say about them, you are, they always think that you're saying it to hurt them. People who don't pray always feel like people coming at them and everybody, ride, everybody riding their backs. Everybody is on their case. When you don't pray, you have, a, you have an open door to offense. We've got to be people of prayer. We must understand that, 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 that we, 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 we've got to become sensitive to the things of God. When we don't pray, we start loving what God hates. Over time, when you develop a life that does not encounter or does not, it's not come put together in prayer, you start loving what God hates. You start thinking it's okay to be in a relationship with the same sex. You start thinking it's okay for you to get high. You start thinking it's okay to do the things that you're doing because there's no conviction. There's no sensitivity in your heart. So you feel that you're okay. When you don't pray, can't make decisions, life decisions, because those decisions are never to be trusted because they are not rooted in the word of God. I was in class on last week, and our instructor, she began to talk about our morals and our code of ethics must align with the word of God. In every area of our life, what we support has to align with God's word. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life, but I'm here to tell you how to live your life. We've got to make sure that what we believe aligns with God's word. 
We've got to make sure who we vote for aligns with God's word. We've got to make sure who we endorse and what we endorse aligns with God's word. The things that we share on Facebook, the things that we endorse and we say this is okay and this is what we should be looking towards to, does it line up with the word of God? As a musician, I get, I get plenty of opportunities to play in many different arenas. But I, I have a code of ethics. I have things that I will not do because of God's word. It's not that I don't like you, but it does not align with my morals. It doesn't align with the word of God. So therefore, I cannot engage in what you want me to do. But when you don't have a life of prayer, there's no morals there. So you'll do any and everything for a dollar. You'll do any and everything. You'll work 60, 70 hours a week to try to make ends meet because you don't pray. Your eyes and your mind is focused on getting money. When you really should be doing is focusing on God. A sinning man will stop praying. Hear this. A sinning man will stop praying. You know that sin is in your life is when you stop praying. One of the key signs of the presence of sin is the lack of prayer. A sinning man will stop praying, but a praying man will eventually stop sinning. Oh, y'all didn't hear me tonight. A sinning man is one who don't pray, but a man who prays eventually will stop sinning. Maybe your sin problem is because of the lack of prayer. Your rate of growth is determined by what you feed your spirit. I'm going to say this again. Your rate of growth is only determined by what you put. Cannot grow. The growth of the human man is how the spirit is fed. When you feed your spirit, that is the only way to merit growth. How do you know you're growing? I'm changing. God is doing a lot in me. Are you feeding your spirit? I'm a firm believer. People don't change over time. The devil is a liar. I've seen people for years. They've been the same person. People don't necessarily change over time. Sometimes that change or all of the time, that change is merited directly to their spiritual intake. What are you putting in your spirit that is causing you to grow? Lord, I want to grow in you where well, you got to be open to feed your spirit with the things that are right. Feed your spirit with prayer. Feed your spirit with the word of God. Feed your, when was the last time your spirit ate a meal? We know the last time your body ate a meal. Some of y'all probably eating right now. We know the last time your body ate a meal. Just think about it. Just like your body get hungry, your spirit gets hungry. And what happens? There's only so many days that the human body can survive without food. So imagine what your spirit look like if you don't feed it. Some of us, we are quenching the very spirit on the inside of us because we refuse to feed it. We don't think church is important. We don't think the word of God is important. We think we just crazy. We think all of this is for show. We think all of this is just a game and a gimmick. But we're here to feed your spirit so that you can mature in God. But you can't do it if you don't pray. See, here's the thing. Preaching affects the man, but prayer affects God. When I get up here and I preach the word of God, that affects you. That don't necessarily affect God. If you want to find a way to touch God, move in prayer. If you want to get to God, get to prayer. You're not getting to God by coming to church. 
you're hearing the word by coming to church to feed your spirit. But if you really want to have an encounter with God, every encounter with God started in prayer. I want you to put that in the chat. Every encounter with God started in prayer. God molds us and he shapes us in prayer. We see that, the, that these men, they were not willing to sacrifice their position because God had told them what to do. They were not distracted. They knew how important prayer was. They were not saying, oh, sometimes the enemy, the enemy will distract you from what you're supposed to be doing by things that you have to do. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes the enemy will distract you from what you're supposed to be doing by things that you have to do. I got to get the kids off to school in the morning. I got to go to bed because I got to get up for work. That's your distraction. Though those things are important, there is nothing more important than your time with God. There is nothing more important than your time with God. We understand and have a clear understanding that the prayers of the righteous avail of much. We understand that, that when we pray that, that God begins to mold us and make us in him. God doesn't mold you and make you with the word of God only. He molds you and make you with prayer as well. See, a lot of us, we, we're not disciplined enough to listen to somebody else tell us about us. When you get in prayer, God begins to tell you, hey, you a liar. You get in prayer, God will tell you, hey, look, man, what you want from other people, you don't even give to them. When you get in prayer, God is honest with you. How many know that we serve a God that is honest? He's not going to lie to you about yourself. He's not going to tell you what you want to hear. He's going to tell you what you need to hear. But if we are never people that can stand corrected in the house of prayer, we'll never stand corrected before men. Many of us, we don't want nobody to tell us what we are and what we're doing wrong. It's because we haven't been in the place of prayer where God has told us where we are and what we've been doing wrong. So when we hear it from people, we think that they're judging us. Oh, Lord. When we hear it from people, we think that they're hating on us. No, if you were in prayer, God would have been told you that you're arrogant. But if you don't pray, you're not able to see what's on the inside. What you behold is what you become. I want you to put that in the chat. Oh, this is good. Can I teach tonight? What you behold is what you become. Which means that when you go in prayer, what you see is what you become. So if you are a man who's always in the face of God, you become the face of God. Y'all hear me tonight. That the more time you spend with God, the more you're going to look like him. Because whatever you behold is what you become. If you've not been in the presence of God, stop telling me you his servant. If you haven't been in the presence and in prayer, stop telling me what God said. Because you cannot speak for him unless he speaks to you. You can't speak for him unless you're in a position for God to speak to you. Prophets got this bad. We, we always got a word from the Lord. We always got what, what I feel in my spirit. But what about what are you hearing? Stop pulling from your spirit and pull from the presence. The spirit always wants to do what's right. Many of us, and this is only for mature believers, we've been bailed out by the spirit. Sometimes the spirit has bailed us out because we haven't gotten in the presence of God. And the spirit got to come and take over because we don't have anything to draw from. What you behold is what you become. You are the company you keep. Oh, this is good. If you're in the company of God, you will become like him. You ever heard that term? You are the company you keep. So keep God in your company. 
Because then you'll become him. You become just like him. But you cannot become like him if he's not in your company. If you're not around him all the time, if he doesn't talk to you, he doesn't walk with you, he doesn't, he, he, he doesn't commune with you, then you can't really become somebody that you don't spend time with. Here's what we got to deal with y'all tonight, and I'm almost done. When we go to prayer, we got to stop going to prayer with our grocery list. Lord, I need two tablespoons of, of love. I need four cups of I don't want to deal with him no more. Lord, I need two gallons of help. Lord, I need an extra dose of affection. Lord, I need an extra bag of help. I need, I need all of this stuff. We got to stop coming in God with a grocery list. And this is the reason why our prayers are not effective, because we come to God and dump all our trash on them. When you go into prayer, you got to touch him. And then he'll touch you. When you go into prayer, you got to get rid of all of the stuff that you want to pray for and say, God, Lord, I want you. God, I need you. I, you know what's already on my heart. God, you already know that I can't stand him. You already know I don't like her. You already know I got a problem with my boss. You already know I got an issue with my son or my daughter. You already know there's an issue in my body. You already know that there's things that I need to take care of in my household. Lord, I'm not coming to you for that. Lord, I'm coming to you for you. When was the last time you prayed God, prayed to God because you just wanted to be with him? When was the last time you opened up your mouth and said, Lord, I thank you. God, I, 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 I know I don't do everything right, and I know I'm not the, 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 the most super saved person on this planet, but Lord, I thank you, God, for just keeping me alive. I thank you for what you're bringing me uh, through. I thank you, God, for just being who you are, God. I worship you, God. I thank you. Lord, I magnify your name. When was the last time you just, you just came into God's presence and praised him for who he was and not what he could do for you? We've got to get accustomed to coming to God for who he is. Would you like somebody to only call you when they need something? Would you like for somebody to only talk to you when they're trying to get something done? Because that's the way we treat God. Did you know God has emotions? God has feelings. That when you lie to him, when you tell him that you ain't going to do it no more, and then you all, and you do it again, do you know that that... <laughs> That, that pricks God's heart sometimes, that God is like, look, I, I mean, I, I'm omni, I'm, uh, uh, what was it, I'm, I'm omniscient, I, I'm all-knowing, I know what, you know what's, what's going on, but I still got some feelings. You, is there any parents watching me right now? And it's like, look, I, I already know that my kid is already messed up, but it still hurt my heart sometimes. I know they're going to make some mistakes, like I made some mistakes. I know they're going to do some things that I didn't teach them to do, but that still doesn't change the fact. That it hurt when I find out. Somebody said, well, if he, if he already know, why would he be hurt? There's nothing like seeing it. There's nothing like experiencing it. You got to come to God for him and him only. We got to stop coming to God with our grocery list. We got to come to God in prayer. When we touch him, he'll touch us. We know through Matthew 6 and 33, he said, what? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all of his righteousness. And then all of these things will be added unto you. If your heart is right from the beginning, God will finish it. We're looking for God to finish things that we don't even have the right motive with it in the beginning. The most intimate times we're going to deal with. The times of prayer as well tonight. The most intimate times of prayer is when people are sleeping. We find this in the scripture that when people are sleeping, that's when we have the deepest connection with God. We see that in the scripture where 
many of us would complain because when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he began to pray and he came out and he found the disciples sleep. That was a blessing because some things God can't do in prayer while people are awoke. We understand that prayer means a lot more when people are sleeping. You don't have the cares or the worries on your mind. You don't have to deal with the kids and deal with the, the, the husband or the wife or deal with your phone pinging all day. You ain't got to deal with the emails and the texts and all of those things. Some of the intimate, most intimate times with God is when you find yourself going to him when everyone else is sleeping. We understand that Jesus went to the synagogues in the morning to pray. Jesus went into the mountains in the morning to pray. But then there were also times where Paul and Silas were in jail and they began to pray at midnight. We must understand that, 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 that maybe we need to create a prayer schedule. And I'm not talking about it. And I'm okay with you talking to God on your way to work. I'm okay with you talking to God on your lunch break. But when was the last time you spent hours in the presence of God? When was the last time you, you turned off the TV? I hear you, Holy Ghost. When was the last time you turned off the TV and you, you wasn't focused on anything else but getting into the presence of God? Can I speak to you? Ain't nothing wrong with you. You don't pray. You ain't depressed. The devil ain't attacking you. You don't pray. Ain't nothing wrong with you. You ain't crazy. You just don't pray. So these things that are, are natural seem bigger than what they are when you don't pray. See, prayer minimizes your obstacles. Prayer minimizes your adversaries. They don't look as big and as strong because David was a man who worshiped and he prayed. Goliath did not look like Goliath in his eyes as Goliath looked in the lives of the soldiers because he knew that God was with him because of his prayer. Can I prophesy to you tonight? God is about to change your vision about who's against you. When you pray, your enemies can be loved because your perspective changes in prayer. You don't see them as haters. You don't see them as people who want to see you fail. You see them as misguided prophets, misguided men and women of God. Oh, I can't pray for my enemies. That's because you don't pray. When you pray, you know how to go to God like David did when Saul was chasing him, trying to kill him, and he still prayed for him. When you don't pray, what's before you seems bigger than what it is. When you don't pray, you're insensitive towards the things of God. And you can do people wrong and it means nothing to you. You can treat folks bogus and it means nothing to you. When you don't pray, you don't have that conscience to say, maybe it's me. When the last time you got into a situation and you said, well, maybe it's me. Maybe I'm the problem. We don't have those conversations because we don't pray. Prayer. It's necessary. Prayer cannot be avoided. Prayer cannot be something that we pick up whenever we're in a time of need. But prayer must be a daily dedication. Prayer must be a daily discipline. You're not going to feel like praying every day. You're not going to feel like going before God. Stop, look, stop depending on your body to want to do spiritual things. Stop depending on your body to want to obey the voice of God. 
For the Bible says that the spirit and the flesh is enmity in the book of Galatians. They're always going to be fighting against one another. Your body don't want to do anything that God tells it to do. When it's time to do what's right and you don't feel like it, you got to push past that. But if you never strengthen your inner man, you'll always obey your outer man. When it's time to fast, your body's going to say, you got to eat. You're going to die. You know you had that surgery. You know you got problems in with, your, with your blood. You know you, you, you got to hurry up and eat when you don't pray. You submit to your flesh. In this hour, we cannot submit to our flesh. We've got to love God more than we love the world. We've got to be people of prayer. In my closing, I want to give you a few scriptures on prayer for you to take home and for you to read. The Bible says in Matthew 17 and 21 that certain demons don't come out unless you fast and pray. Matthew 17 and 21. Some stuff you struggling with it ain't going to happen because you're going to counseling. It ain't going to change because you got a therapist. It ain't going to change. Some of that stuff come out when you pray and fast. I didn't say it. Jesus said it. Let's move on. We understand that in Luke 1 and 13, it says, But the angel said unto to, 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 to him, Fear not, Zacharias, fear not, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. If you understand the story, Elizabeth was pregnant with John, or she, they, they, they wanted to have a baby. They wanted, Elizabeth was barren. She could not have children. But Zacharias, a husband of prayer, began to birth something in his wife. We understand that through prayer that you can put a seed into someone else. That when you pray that these things that did not work before can now work for you. I don't care if they denied the person before you. I don't care if they denied your cousin or your mama or your family. I don't care because I pray God will make something out of nothing. Because I pray. Elizabeth was a woman who could not bear children, but her husband began to pray for her. Ah, is there anybody that can't bear children? And you're like, man, I've been trying to have this baby, and, and I know that God told me that it's going to happen. I dare you to get a praying man. I dare you to open up your mouth in prayer because God will release barren wombs in prayer. There's a, there's a message I put on Facebook. It's called Pray for the Barren. It's on YouTube as well. It's called Pray for the Barren. I want you to see it. I want you to listen to it because prayer will break the bands of wickedness in areas where you thought that it would never change. Elizabeth thought that she was going to be barren for the rest of her life, but she had a praying husband. She had a husband that called out to God. And because of prayer, she began to bring forth and conceived John the Baptist, one of the greatest men of God who ever lived. Sometimes your prayer is going to bring forth your greatest blessing. Maybe what you're waiting on is in your own mouth. Maybe what you want to see right now is, is in your own loins right now. Maybe what God wants to do in your family is in your prayer. Maybe what God wants to do is in, in your marriage is in your prayer life. Maybe your money and your career and your business will take off when you begin to pray because prayer will break the bands of wickedness when you pray. 
Lives are changed. People are healed. People are delivered. People are set free. Whatever could not produce will produce when you pray. Whatever could not grow will grow when you pray. Whatever could not release when you call on the name of Jesus, it will break every chain. I know we talk about it. I know we sing about it. But every chain is broken in prayer. You want change to be broken. God, I've been dealing with this for the longest. God, I wonder if I'm going to die with this habit. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Uh, God, I'm, I'm wondering, God, am I going to die with this vice? Am I going to die with this on me? God, it's, it's been there so long, I think it's a part of me. It's been there so long, God, but I really think that I am what I'm going through. But when I begin to pray, I begin to break every chain. I begin to loose every demon. I begin to break everything. It's on my life. I, if there's anything that you're challenged with right now, I dare you to pray. I dare you to pray when you don't know what's going on and you, you feel like that you'll be here for the rest of your life. I hear you. Come on, there are many that feel like I'm going to deal with this until I die. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a struggle like this until I die. And I, all I got is dreams. All I got is hopes. All I got is just a wish and a prayer. But I'm telling you, if you pray, God will change it. God will heal. God will deliver. God will set free if we just pray. Uh, your answer to your problem is in your prayer. I hear you, Holy Spirit. The answer to your problem is in your prayer. The answer to what you need God to do is going to come through when you kneel down before him. When you, when you say, God, I don't want any money right now. God, I don't care about a car. God, I don't care about what's going on. God, I need you. He said in his word, if you draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. Is there anybody willing to draw from the water? Is there anybody that's willing to say, God, God, I, I know I got a schedule. I know I'm scheduled to be at work today. I know I'm scheduled, God, for an appointment. But, God, I'm staying home to get in your presence. God, I'm staying home, God, because I can't do it without you. Oh, come on, we set appointments with everything else except for God. Nah, we put everything on our schedules of, 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 of deadlines and things that we need to be done. When was the last time you made a God appointment? When was the last time you said, God, I, God, I want to meet you Saturday at 8 a.m. God, I want to meet you Friday at 8 p.m. God, I want to meet you somewhere. God, meet me there. I, I know we talk about Adam and Eve and we talk about them in a negative way, but they... they, they, they they, they had a meeting place with God. We know this because in the scripture, the Bible says that God came and said, Adam, where art thou? Hold on, wait. I, I'm used to meeting you at this time and you're not there. It, isn't, it wasn't the fact that God didn't know where he was. He didn't know where he was. Because of his inability to get because of his inability to get to the place that God called him to do, he found himself in sin. Whenever you miss a God appointment, I promise you, you're going to be stuck doing something you ain't supposed to. People who miss appointments are people who lack prayer. You can't miss the next appointment. I want you to put in the chat if you're watching me, I can't miss this next appointment. I got too much going on in my life to miss this next appointment. I got too much riding on this next decision. I can't, I can't miss the next appointment. We need to pray. We need to pray. Father, we thank you, God, for tonight. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for... Your spirit, God, even in this place, Lord, let us, God, continue in prayer. Lord, we want to pray to you tonight, God, because we understand, Father God, that we have not dealt wisely with what you've given us, God. You've given us a heart and a mind to pray for your people, God. We charge every intercessor. We charge, God, everyone that is assigned to pray for your people. We charge the men and the women of God in this hour to God to move forth in prayer, God. That we don't move and make decisions based on how we feel and based on what we see and based on who all making their decisions. But, God, that we will move by your spirit when we begin to pray.
I pray, Lord, now that you will begin to convict our hearts and, and put us in a place of prayer, God, that we will never have to deal with what we're dealing with, God, if we just stay in prayer. God, give us residence, God, in the place of prayer. Lord, give us a hunger for prayer, a hunger for your people like we've never had before. I pray, Lord, tonight be a night of conviction that you will convict our heart to pray more. That you will convict our heart, God, to go before your throne. That you will com convict us, God, to get into your presence, God, to chase after you. Father, we thank you. We love you. And we thank you for your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I thank you for joining us tonight. I pray that if this touched you, that you share this, that you tag people. If you really feel that this touched you, you never know who you're touching. Please share this, like this video. We love you. We thank you for joining us tonight. If you want to give tonight, it should be on the screen. You can give by way of Cash App. You can give by way of PayPal. If something that you heard tonight bless you, I want you to give in to it. Giving is not necessarily for us, but it's for you. Because many of us have lacked our time in prayer, and therefore we have withheld our seed. Because real intercessors and real people of prayer that are following the things of God will not struggle with yielding their seed and giving their seed up. So I, I ask for you to bless the people of God even as they give. God, that they give into good ground. God, that you will press down, shake it together, running over. God, so men shall give unto their bosom. I thank you for joining us tonight. I also want to let you know this, and I'm done. We're in a strange season right now where God is about to release the harvest. Hear me. God is releasing the harvest. God said, this is the hour where I'm going to start yielding seed. And God said, everything that you've sown in this hour, I'm going to cause a return on what you've sown. But God said, there shall be many men that are going to look for a harvest, but they have not planted. God said, I'm going to cause you to survive in this hour because of the seeds that you've planted in prior times. Hear me. But God said, know that this day, that even as I begin to yield seed, that there is an enemy that is looking to come snatch your seed that is yielding in the earth. And God said, we've got to be very careful that we honor the harvest that God has given us because we cannot, we cannot allow the enemy to snatch what the enemy wants to take away from us. So we've got to be very careful. I'm not, I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about things that you've sown, things that you've sown in tears, things that you've sown in time, think time that you've sown, that the enemy is about to bring forth a harvest. There's things that we were praying for even in the past that God is going to cause to happen. I see many of us praying that our lives will be changed and, and, and our addictions will be reversed. But I hear God saying, this is the time where I'm going to give you what you prayed for, that the seeds that you sowed in tears, the seeds that you sowed in, 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 in prayer, God said, I'm going, to, I'm going to reveal them to you and I'm going to give them. But the enemy wants to seek to kill, steal, and destroy. But I hear God saying, but I come that you may have life and that more abundantly. So we cover God every seed. We cover every seed in this hour, God. We cover, God, everyone, God, that has yielded seed in this hour. We cover the harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. God, we put a demand on the things and the people of God to be protected. I pray, even as a shepherd, that even as the, the, the enemy desire to snatch the seed away from the sower, that this will be an hour, God, where we will be protected by your blood and, God, by your mercy and your favor. God, I cover, God, everyone, God. I cover their seed. I cover their time of harvest, God, that they will not, God, reap the benefits of what the enemy wants to do in their life, but God, that they shall know that you are God. If I hear the Lord saying this very clearly, hear me, hear me clearly. I hear the Lord say, the enemy wants your seed because he wants to discourage you. Hmm. The enemy wants to snatch your seed, your seed because he wants to discourage you to make you feel that what you have sown, that there's not going to be any return. Even as God began to move in, 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 in the story of Cain and Abel, the enemy desired to use Cain to try to strip Abel away from the earth. A lot of us think that he just hated his brother, but it was something much more deeper. 
What was going on is, is that Abel was a man who planted seed. He was a, he was a man that, that knew how to sacrifice. He was a man that knew how to yield seed unto God. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Hear me. But what happened was is that the enemy did not want Abel to get a return on what he put in the earth. So the enemy snatched Abel's life using Cain because all of the sacrifice that Cain had put in the earth, it would put everything to void. Of everything that he had given, everything that he had sacrificed. But hear me and hear me clearly. The Bible said then all of a sudden there came a Seth. And I hear the Lord said, I'm releasing a Seth in this hour. And that word Seth means to repay or to recompense. That whatever desire or that the enemy has to snatch away from us, whatever harvest that we have been yielding, God said, I'm going to come and repay my people for the devil is a liar. God is not mocked. Whatsoever, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That is a law and we stand upon it tonight. We stand upon the seeds that we've sown, that the devil is a liar, that we will reap everything that we've sown. In the name of Jesus, I got to go. I love you guys. I pray that you guys have a great night until we meet again on Saturday night at 6 p.m. 6751 North Titonia Avenue here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We love you and we pray that you have a great night.